Hey, hey, everyone, and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today we are working on a Loom Knit Star. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I'm showing you my little samples that I've made of my stars. Um, I am working with the Flexi Loom. So the Flexi Loom are these little bitty links. And the reason I'm able to do a five-pointed star with this pattern is because it works um, a pico point with every two pegs. And I did a pattern several years ago, I think it was 2013 or 14, and uh, I did a six-point pico star, which you can see that video uh, as well on my YouTube channel. But because the Flexi Loom came out, it gave me uh, the ability to take a 12 uh, peg loom and move it down to a 10 peg loom, which allows me to make this five point star. So I thought, man, let's do it in both of the gauges, which is the, um, which is the skinny and the, uh, chunky, which you see here, here's the chunky and here's the skinny. Um, here's the thing, um, uh, with these looms. So, um, you are going to need to, um, put the, uh, ones together that are, uh, just the, curved end ones okay the rounded end not the straight okay these rectangular flat ones because the curved ones allow it to um, curve so you're going to be able to make a star today you can um, use your yarn that you finish off with your tail as your hanger or you can clip it off and trim it up and then put in a um, either a hook for uh, an ornament or your earring or you don't have to use that at all you can embellish it and sew it together maybe put a bunch of stars on um on a blanket or on a um a scarf or cowl or something even use that glow in the dark yarn uh, that would be kind of fun too right um here is one that i use i'm going to talk for a minute about um, the yarn while everybody's coming in because i'm going to do this demo as if you're working it together with me so it's going to be from beginning to end so um you can grab two and a half yards of your yarn that you want to use and whichever loom that's appropriate the chunky one can work with a five or six weight yarn or you can use multiple strands of a smaller yarn this one is a four yarn and i did three strands and it doesn't look as good but um if you want this kind of um uh kind of nubby texture bulky you can use it i use burnett uh, baby blanket tiny on that one three strands and it's a chenille i wouldn't recommend this chenille by itself the three strands was okay but um i also did one out of the um burnett blanket which is a chenille uh it but in order for it to not break which i actually had one break um this is one that didn't the reason why it didn't is because i paired it with I believe this is a three weight it's from red heart and it has a um it's like a three it has like a little bit of a um, a sparkle in it i'm not sure if you can see that but i put both of these strands together and made this one because the strength of uh this yarn here because it's a um it's twisted and it has a stronger fiber in it it doesn't have that metal um mint middle sorry i can't talk the middle thread of a chenille type yarn has a one long thread in the middle and when you pull and yank on it in the middle uh, for this drawstring uh, cast on it can pop and break and so we don't want that so pair it with a strong yarn or thread uh, if you use something like this um, what i recommend doing is something like this yarn which is a smooth yarn this is karen simply soft and this is a um, four weight yarn medium and i use that with this skinny loom and five lengths of the rounded links now uh the also oh also before i forget uh, now this one is discontinued but doesn't matter but this is a super bulky six weight yarn burnett beyond burnett beyond and this one is what i used on the um chunky loom which i'm going to do a demonstration for you on because it's easier to see um anyway let's go back to this loom so uh, you can see how uh, both of these looms I have two darks and three light links okay that's important because that's going to help you um, remember certain things like our bind off technique but also where to begin and where to end you can use a stitch marker to uh, show you where to begin on here as your number one peg um, 
but it could get in the way unless it's maybe a rubber banded one that's like really pushed down to the bottom. You'll see why later on, but you end up having three loops on here at a time and it can be a little bit much. Okay, so if you got your supplies, uh, gather them. We'll begin. We're already five minutes in, so I want to make sure and uh, begin. If anybody wants to click down below, say tutorial starts at five minutes and 15 seconds. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm going to get my yarn and I need... Um, <clears throat> I need about two and a half yards of yarn. It can be, <clears throat> excuse me, it can be scrap yarn, of course. Um, uh, two and a half to five yards uh, at the most. And then I also need my tapestry needle. That is important. Oh, of course, our scissors and our loom hook. Uh, and then you may want a small crochet hook. Uh, I think it comes in handy. Um, this was an F size hook, uh, F is in Frank. You can use something uh, a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, or just to get in between the stitches and um, pull through. It's one of the very last things. But you don't have to use it. You can use a tapestry needle. All right, let me push these things to the side so we don't have a messy screen for you to look at. Okay, so we're gonna begin by putting together our loom, okay? So we've got two of these plain and simple ones, uh, two links together, which makes four. Uh, our very last one is going to be our, um, I'm sorry, um, this one on the right is going to be our what we call our last peg, okay? And then next to it, we're going to have a dark link and then a light link. Again, they're all rounded and then a dark link. Snap them together, put them around a circle with the groove facing out. And snap them together it makes a pentagon okay so we have 10 pegs we're gonna do a um, cast on which is called a drawstring cast on and it is um, it done in the round and it will cinch together and make the small circle you can close your circle up or you can leave it a little bit open uh, this one uh, was made on this loom here, and so I actually used a, a super bulky yarn on this one, so I can't close it up as much. But this one right here, um, uh, I worked on this one. Okay. Oh, by the way, the sizes. This is about um, the small one is about one and a half inches. Well, when you use an appropriate yarn, this is about one and a half inches, and then the larger one is about two and a quarter inch. Okay, two and a fourth. Okay, so we're gonna take our tail and drop it inside our loom and uh, it is important to uh, have both hands for this uh, so uh, dexterity wise I, I, I don't really have a workaround for you unless maybe you uh, take some tape and tape this here um, or you could maybe uh, tie on this first part here uh, this loop here to keep it uh, stable and then let it go later, but I don't want it there right now because I don't want it to confuse you on all these other yarns you're going to see flying around here because it does look a little bit different. Okay, so um, we're going to come up between the last peg and the first peg and um, go to the side of the last peg. And you're going to go in front of the last peg, in front of the first peg. Okay, this is the only spot we do it here, and then we'll cover over in front of two uh, on the other side when we come around. You'll see that in a minute. So um, we're going in front of the last and the first peg only. Then we're going to go behind the second peg and go in front of the third peg. And we're going to keep going every other peg with the yarn in front. Again, I'm going to go slower because I'm hoping that you're following me. You can always later on on the replay, by the way, thank you for joining if you're joining on the replay or live. Um, and uh, you can always hit that slower button uh, if you need me to go slower. Okay, uh, that's the playback speed and the controls for YouTube. All right, so we're back over to um, the beginning. Okay, so I went in front of the second to last peg here. Now, uh, I actually want to put my yarn in front of the second to last peg and the last peg. And we're just going to hold it. And I like to put my thumb here and just kind of hold it in place. Now we're going to start knitting over. And this is actually um, still part of our cast on, but we're going to lock it into place. So the first place we lock it in is on peg one. And you're going to have two loops in front of peg one and only one in front of peg two. 
when you have two loops, you're going to lift up and over and knit off. And then that other peg, you're just going to leave alone. So I'm going to now rotate. And what I'm doing here is I've got my yarn between these two fingers here. You don't have to be all technical, but um, when I turn it, it's kind of putting the yarn uh, in front of um, these pegs for me. And then I can position it in the right place. So, uh, and I'm still holding on to my tail down here. Okay, it just makes it easier, and uh, I'll show you why in a moment. Um, I let it go yesterday, and it kind of came out here and made it a little bit confusing. So I am still holding on to it. So now we're on to our, what is this, our fifth peg. Knit over, rotate, come around. This is our seventh peg. Knit over, and then turn. And now we're on the last section because we've got these two links that are same color here together. So we're going to knit off this one. And that should be, yeah, I may be getting my numbers wrong, but anyway, <laughs> we've got 10 pegs. Uh, all right, so now this one, second to last one, should be number nine. So that was seven here, and then here's nine. We're going to knit off that second to last peg. And now the very last peg is like really odd looking. It's kind of messy. You're like, did I do it wrong? No, you didn't do it wrong. Um, my... Um, tail is still down here. I'm still holding on to it. So we're going to knit off. Um, remember that uh, this loop is our new yarn, our working yarn. So it's going to remain on top and we're just going to lift up and over these bottom two uh, pieces. Okay. And that now that's locked in. Okay. I'm going to still hold on to this tail for now. All right. Now we're on to round one. Round one and round two are the same thing. You're just going to knit all the way around uh, each stitch. That's it. So I'm going to knit off all these stitches and don't pull too tightly because um, you want to be able to knit the next round. Uh, I find that when you have a flat knit, which is what this is, um, you really have to hold this part here loose. You have to hold your yarn that uh, works around uh, looser. And if you're working them individually, you can just, you know, do this. Um, you know, I wouldn't come all the way around, but you can. I would keep it loose enough, though, um, that you, um, that you're not too tight for the next round. Okay, when I get to this second to last peg here, uh, make sure that your tail is still down here, uh, because if this little part comes out, it makes it kind of confusing. So uh, make sure it's down before you start locking in this these last couple pegs. And now that it's locked in, I can let go. Okay, so that was round one. Round two is the same thing. So go ahead and work all pegs around. If you're working with me and caught up, you, you probably have already <laughs> done this round because I'm just sitting here talking. I promise. It doesn't actually take as long to do this project. The bind off is the part that takes longer. Uh, I'm going to talk about the bind off now uh, while I'm still working on this one so you can kind of get it. We are doing um, a cast on of two and a bind off of four and every time we do that we will get a pico which is one of the little points of our star. Okay so we're coming around to the last peg. All right now this is the first peg and this is the last peg. On this particular project, we are going to start going in the opposite direction. So now you're going to pretend like this project is a flat panel. Don't worry about it being in the round. We're not, we're not going in the round anymore. We're going sequentially in order, but you're going to be going <laughs> to the right two to cast on, and then you're going to go to the left four to bind off. So uh, what you're doing is you're going to uh, add in some stitches, which will make this little point be here. And then when you knit them and then you can knit the next two, it makes this point rise up. And then you're moving over to the next point where you're going to add two more, let it rise up for a point, And then you're going to uh, bind off two more to get this little edge here. And that's how you get these little points achieved. I hope that makes sense. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, they, they disappear pretty pretty quick on the side here, um, the live ones. Hey, everybody, I see you uh, joining me. Um, hey, Cassandra, I see you're new. Welcome. <laughs> I'll have to read, go back and read your comment later. Um, 
I can't individually reply to you later on the live um, comments, just so you know. Um, so if you are joining me live uh, and you have a specific question you do not want me to miss, please come back after the replay and write your specific question or you can find a video that relates to it on my channel and hopefully I can answer it there. Okay, so we're going to be casting on. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna ignore these two stitches down below, okay? They don't, they're not relevant to what we're gonna do. We're gonna cast on using the true cable cast on method. So you're going to take your working yarn and we're going to put it above our last stitch so we just come around from the side and we're going when you do the cable cast on you're going to put the yarn on the side of the peg in the direction you want to cast on so i'm going to go in this direction so the yarn is coming around here okay and now i'm going to take my uh, loom tool go under the existing stitch <clears throat> excuse me i'm sorry i'm gonna get a water hold on Oh, sorry. Okay, um, we're going to go underneath this stitch here. And then we're going to make a loop by pulling downward. This is a actually um, true knit stitch. This is uh, some people call it the reverse purl because it's the opposite of a purl stitch. So instead of taking this off, we're just going to take our loop and turn it. So we're flipping it and we're placing it on this uh, first loop, what was our very first peg before. Take your working yarn and tug on it tightly, and I do mean tightly, okay, tightly to uh, the back, okay, so you're going in between these two uh, pegs. All right, now we want to cast on one more, so we're going to go around the back of that loop that we just made. Remember the yarn is in the direction we want to be casting on, so now um, this is the trickier part because I got to go in between these two loops. So ignore the bottom one. We're going underneath this second loop here. We're going to pull down a loop. What I'm doing is I'm using my tool, the pick, and I'm just making my, sure I'm just going right into that groove and I'm pushing on that and sliding and coming up so that I can just grab all the strands of what I need. Now we're going to take it. You can use your yarn tool and flip it or you can take it out and use your fingers, doesn't matter. Flip it. Now we're gonna cinch it up, so we're gonna move our yarn in between the two pegs and pull on it, all right? Now we're going, to, so we just cast it on, now we're gonna bind off four. The way you start binding off is you always uh, knit the first and second peg. Now, I'm gonna say one peg, two peg, or first and second peg a lot. I'm gonna say it over and over because I need you to plow it in your brain. But um, now we're going to be calling the pairs of pegs we talk about in binding off peg one and peg two. And then peg one and peg two will move as we bind things off. Okay, so we're going to knit the first peg. And also in binding off, uh, on the Pico bind off only, you will tighten your stitches. So normally I would never tell you, tighten it really tight on a bind off, but this one you do. So we knit peg one, now we're going to knit peg two. And now uh, we're gonna pick up peg two and move it to peg one. Again, we're ignoring the ones at the bottom. And now we're going to uh, knit off, which is lifting up and over that uh, middle loop that you saw over the top loop. And then now we're gonna pick it up. And when we pick it up, we're going to um, tighten. So I like to pull on this, uh, this part of the loop. And when I do, it really cinches up uh, that extra slack. And now I'm going to place it on uh, my peg two, which is now going to be my peg one. I put my finger at the back and then just pull on it. My finger at the back just kind of holds it in place onto that uh, peg until it gets tighter. All right, now it's nice and tight. All right, now my peg one and peg two are these two. So now I'm going to knit peg two. And now we're going to take peg two, move it to peg one. Tighten it. I'm just using this finger here. If you want to know how I'm holding it, I'm doing it like this. Um, it doesn't matter, but if you do crochet, you might you know, normally do something like this without thinking about it. All I'm doing is I'm just holding this tight here, and then I'm just sticking my finger up this way to kind of create some tension. So when I want to tighten things, I just go and pull it. And then I'm just taking my other fingers and holding the loom. Okay, you can do that in replay if you want it, if you want help holding on to it, but it's not really necessary. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, knit this over, make sure I've got just that loop, not parts of the other one. 
And um, if it's tight, what I do is I use my tool as a leverage and I put the tip on the top of the uh, peg here and I just kind of move it like that. Okay. Pick that up, tighten it up, move it over to the empty peg, which now becomes our peg one. You are not done. We cast it on and we need to bind off two. So until those pegs are empty, these two on this link here, one, two, uh, then, then you're not done until that, okay? So now we're going to knit peg two again. Move peg two to one. Knit off. There we go. And tighten, move it over, tighten. Okay, now turning. See, now we're gonna start working with these other two uh, links over here, or this, this next link, because we're not done on this one. So knit peg two, move it over to one, knit off, tighten. And move, oh, you know what? I didn't knit off that last one. Hold on, I'm getting in trouble. Tighten that and move it. Ta-da! Okay, and now we have a Pico. Isn't it cute? It's so cute. You can barely see it, but there is it. There it is. I can't talk. That's it right there. <laughs> ah, okay, so... <laughs> You could open your loom and kind of look at it, but it's really tight right now because um, it's just, I mean, it still looks like it's in the round. So there's not really room to just kind of open this up. Um, all right. So now we've got this link here. Okay. Um, you know that these two need to be completely empty. And so now once you start looking at these other colors, it's easier to tell, did I bind these off yet or not? So now we need to cast on again. Here it is again. We're going to go around the back here, putting the yarn on the side towards where you're casting on. Go underneath that first loop, pull down, make a loop. I'm all over the place. Sorry, I'm not looking at my monitor. I'm looking to the side. I'm going to take my loop and flip it, put it on the uh, empty next to it, tighten it. All right, and we're going to Put our yarn around the back of that one we just made and we're gonna cast on a second one make a loop pull down take that loop flip it and put it on the next empty peg tighten it all right now we're going to knit peg one and peg two you always knit the first peg when you start binding off and then you're only knitting uh, peg two um, sequentially as you're binding off. So always knit that first peg. So knit one and then knit two. Seeing some late people join us, welcome. I've already started binding off the picos for the star. You can catch us on the replay to do it again. So we're moving um, our two peg to our one peg. Tighten that up, knit off, tighten again move it to the empty and now we're calling this peg our peg one and this peg our peg two so we're casting on four binding off i mean i'm sorry casting on two binding off four i do not recommend you put down your knitting when you're in this stage you have my my blessing to tell people to go away <laughs> <laughs> All right, knitting off peg two, <laughs> move peg two to one, knit off peg one, tighten, move it, tighten. All right, we're not done yet, okay? We've, we've only bound off one of these links here, so we need this second one, okay? So knit off peg two. Well, well, knitting peg two, and then we're going to knit it off onto peg one. So we put it on peg one, knit over, tighten, place it on peg two, which now becomes your one. Okay, so uh, we are now uh, two picots in. Peekaboo, 
there they are. <laughs> they look like little bunny ears. Um, and so you continue. Now, let me give you a warning. If you um, forget to cast on here, and then you continue going, and you and then you remember the cast on two more times, what you'll have is something that looks like that. Okay, because if you keep binding off, it's just going to be straight, which is cool because you could create something like that if you wanted to. Okay, so just uh, make sure that you are um, casting on. So if you come back and go, why do I only have four picos or three picos, Kristen? That's because you didn't cast on. All right, so we're uh, casting on again. Okay, if you missed it, you're going around the back of your stitch. Uh, with the yarn towards the empty peg that you want to create. Go under, pull downward, making a knit stitch, flip it. It's important that you flip it and not like this. If you do it like this, it doesn't work right. So flipping it works. Tighten it up. Okay, now knit peg one and two. Make sure to tighten. Take peg two and move it over so um, you can uh, make this on other looms with more pegs if you do so um, if, if you're if you're working on someone's got a question on here if you're working on say a 12 peg loom like how I did for my six point pico star you get six points so for every two pegs you create a pico I also have one working with a 24 peg loom and it makes kind of a starburst and you have a whole bunch of picos um, you may have to have more rounds on the 12 peg loom we go t uh, three rounds in the middle um, 10 we did the two rounds of knit and the 24, I didn't look that up, but um, I do have the pattern on my website for the Pico um, uh, Blossom or Flower. I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, I'll have a link uh, to the project uh, in a little bit here. Okay, and always check the video description for more links and come back because um, I may have to add some later. Uh, okay, so we're going to take our two peg and knit it, uh, move it over, knit off, pick it up tighten, move it over. I'm going to start um, just working on these next ones without really saying much. Uh, hit the two, move it to the one. And knit off, tighten, move it over. Okay, and then we're still knitting uh, this next one because we still have to get rid of this one over here. So knit the two, uh, move it over to the one, knit off, pick it up, make sure it's tight, and put that down. And here we go. We have three picos for our star. All right, so continue on. We're going to cast on uh, two more and bind off four more twice so because we have two more links to do and you can really see those set links here to tell okay cast on one and cast on oh see what am i doing i'm not i'm not even thinking hold on hold on hold on undo <laughs> like i'm on a computer undo undo go around control z or whatever okay uh <laughs> Cast on. Here we go. <laughs> I started trying to read comments that were popping up and I got really distracted. <laughs> okay. I've cast it on two. And now I'm going to knit two. All right. Move your two to your one. Move the one over to the empty it becomes the new one make sure it's nice and tight I don't know that I tightened that one very well all right now we're gonna knit our two move it to our one knit off tighten it move it over now I know that I still have two more to bind off, but I want you to see what this looks like when it's not quite done. 
Um, okay, these are complete picots. You can see they're nice and long. If I look at this one, it's kind of just barely hanging on. It's really tight up to it, but I actually need it further away from my um, from my peg. See how it's like just hugging it? It's this little, it's just, hi, I'm right here. Okay, it needs some space until you get to the next Pico. So you can tell like if you go, oh, I, I think I'm done. I'm ready to cast on more. No, you're not because they're way too close together. <laughs> so uh, want to go around and, uh, whoops, uh, sorry, we want to go ahead and do the um, uh, knit off peg two and move it to peg one, knit off and move it over. And I'll show you some of the space that you just created, but we're not done yet. Okay, so here is that piece again, but it's got a little bit more space on it. Okay, you can see a little bitty uh, knit stitch there. Got it? One more knit. Knitting two, moving it to one, knitting off, uh, getting the slack out, tightening it up, moving it over, and here we go. Now look, it's got some more distance. We've socially distanced our, <laughs> our picos. <laughs> oh, sorry, bad joke. All right, so... Um, <laughs> Yes, I'm using Bernat Beyond right now. Thank you. Someone was asking. Okay, so now I've got one more Pico to do. I've only got the four. If I don't finish, it's going to have like a weird square. Okay, so now we want to uh, cast on. So we're going to go underneath, pull down like a knit stitch, take that and flip it to our empty peg, tighten it up, make another one, and flip it and tighten and we are at the last one so we're gonna bind all of these off and when you're binding these off you end up having um, one more stitch that you don't actually really end up working so I just work it one more time because it kind of needs that so uh, I'll show you that in a moment so we're gonna knit one knit two it I actually do make this much faster than this tutorial I am going very slow so you could crank out several of these, but yes, the, the Pico bind off is more painstaking to do. It is time consuming, but these are so small that it's really not that big of a deal. Okay, knit peg two. And we do have a pattern for you available on our website. We do have the link for that. If you are a VIP uh, level two member currently, as of um, this live filming, you should be getting it or have gotten it um, from, uh, from us. Level two gets all the PDFs. And our PDFs have gone up in price to $2.99 each uh, ad-free if you want them. Otherwise, you can get them free on the blog. Uh, but if you're a Level 2 member, you get them. Um, level 2 is um, $4.99 a month with YouTube right now. All right, I'm knitting the last peg. Uh, and you get every pattern that comes out from us um, every week. So uh, I've got this last one. I moved my 2 to 1. I knit it off. Let's go ahead and add some more yarn by knitting these. Uh, can you send the link to the Beginner Basics Loop video? We do have a playlist. If you go visit our Good Knit Kisses, our main page for the Beginner Playlist for Loom Knitting, and we've got all the lessons there. Okay, so I knit that one more time. I'm going to make a nice big loop. Go ahead and um, cut your yarn. Okay, do not pull it through just yet. Okay, boop. It looks weird. Here's our weird star. <laughs> okay, so um, the back, you can see all the pearl bumps and the front, uh, you can see um, looks a little odd because it's got the drawstring cast on. Um, we're going to leave this loop here for now because you might want uh, some extra um, to do one more loop, um, but also you'll see how I finish that off. So I want to get the middle part done first and it, you'll see why because it, it's easier to tell where you connect this last loop. So... Um, if I pull on it, the yarn is coming from this direction, coming around that we want to shrink up. This is like uh, having a magic loop, like in crochet or whatever. So we're just going to um, pull down, um, or uh, pull this way. I'm pushing down on my Pico. Uh, usually I put my finger right here to give it some tension, but I'm gonna push on my Pico so you can see 
and see how it's pulling that slack out. Now, depending upon the strength of your yarn, you may have a little bit more or less difficulty. As I pull, you can see the star kind of come together. There we go. I do have to put my finger on it to give it, make it nice and tight. Okay. All right, so that is the middle of my star. Uh, I'm going to leave this till the very last to weave in the tail. I think you can pretty much see how to do that. So um, this right here is where we need to connect it to the point right here. Okay. And um, when I take my uh, loop and pull it this way, you can see the knit stitches line up really well. If I take my yarn and pull it through again it can create another one of these little knit stitches but be careful if you create too many of them uh, when you're trying to figure out where to pin this to because you could create a little hole uh, in between an extra stitch here so um, if I take my um, uh, my crochet hook and you could take your needle and put it through here backwards so where the um, the, the uh, eye of the needle is sticking out from the top um, it can do the same thing okay I'm just gonna find the place where I want um, my star to go my little anchor point okay so I've got my hook coming up from the back and then I'm gonna get my loop and put it on there and then pull on my yarn to make it smaller Okay, and then I'm going to take my tail that's from my loop. Okay, this is not from the uh, the middle part. Okay, this is my loop from my um, this is my tail from my last stitch, and then I'm going to pull it through. I'm catching it on my hook, and I'm pulling it through. Or you can thread your needle and pull it through that way. I'm just going to pull it through that loop through the back and then just pull it on through and I've got my loop was a little bit too a little bit too loose so let me make a little adjustment here I like to kind of customize this one and adjust it a little bit because I want it to still look like a knit stitch and so sometimes I play with this, sometimes I don't, because sometimes it just works out well. It honestly, it just depends on the yarn. Okay, so there it goes. So now it has um, finished. It has that still that knit stitch look. And then this part is in the back. And then you can see how it's kind of pulling on this still. What I can do is um, make a little knot to finish it off and keep it in the same position. So let's go ahead and put in our tapestry needle. So I'm going to come around uh, from another loop back here, another back of a stitch, and pull through, get this tail, and I'm going to leave a little loop here, and then go through my loop, and then create a little knot. All right, and so now that is anchored in really well. Uh, and then um, let me just come out of here and I'll finish off. I'm going to leave this long tail here because you can create a hanger from that or you can uh, tie another knot and cut it off. Um, but let's finish this one here. So the middle one, I'm just going to thread my needle again. This is from the drawstring cast on. It's open. You can choose to leave it open. Hey, you could put a jewel there, whatever you want to do. But when you get it to the position you want, pull it tight and uh, go into the next stitch here in the same direction you were going and go down to the back pull it tight and close it in like that and then we'll flip over to the back find the back of a stitch I'm gonna get my tail out of here so it's not so hard to look at we pull it through leave a loop or you could put your finger here to kind of make a loop you know and then um, pull it through that loop again make your little knot okay and then just weave in your tail um, a few times if you want um, and then um, go ahead and cut it
And then this one, uh, you can choose to, uh, of course, weave it in, or I'm going to make a little loop for my tree. Or maybe you want to cut it off and you maybe want to use, um, you know, something that's gold or silver uh, to put on here. i um, not sure you'd want to do tinsel or not, but you could use an ornament uh, holder that's already existing or put in an earring, of course, and then cut the whole thing off. All right, so I'm just going to go in the back of one of these other loops here. And then once I figure out the length that I want uh, this, I'll just tie a knot to anchor it in. Cut it off. And if you're like, I don't want the, knot, the the tail to show so close up there, you could weave it in to get it further away. Because um, I've done that before where I cut it too close to the holder. And then you can see, oh, no, hang on. There's multiple strands in this burnet beyond. It's a little annoying. Hold on. Uh, I'm just getting it to where when I cut the, the knot, you won't see the little frayed part from behind the holder. So let's just move this down a little bit. Just pick up a few stitches here. And there it is. So we have our little holder. Um, our, our, for our um, tree. Here's my other one that I did, was made on the skinny loom. Uh, here's another one that looks just like this one. One without it that was made on this one was still the Bernat Beyond. Uh, and then this one right here was uh, actually made with this uh, Peyton's uh, Alpaca Blend, which is a five weight yarn. And uh, I made this one on the chunky loom, but it needed an extra little oomph. And if you can see, it has a little bit of the sparkle. That's because I used it with that um, sparkly uh, red heart from before. So I actually held these two together. So I put a five and a four together and they worked really well. When I put the five, this, this particular five weight, it's actually kind of thin and it was just too thin on here and it looks ridiculous. So <laughs> I put something else with it. Uh, by the way, uh, this is what some red heart chic sheep looks like uh, that I use this one. I kind of messed up on, but this is what it kind of looks like uh, on the skinny loom. So Thank you guys for joining me. I know that was a long tutorial, but at least you can make it um, from beginning to end on there. Um, I appreciate you coming to Good Knit Kisses. And uh, if you want uh, more tutorials like this, please be sure and comment down below. Hit the subscribe button. If you haven't been getting uh, notifications and you're wondering why, um, I have suggested to some people subscribe, uh, so unsubscribe and then hit subscribe again and hit the bell icon. It kind of tricks the system for YouTube. And... Um, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to get it uh, the next time. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> there might be a button where it says to get notifications for live. So that would be great. Uh, you guys have a wonderful weekend. I hope to see lots and lots of stars. Oh my gosh, make me happy. I would love to see lots of posts. Be sure and tag me on Instagram too. I know you guys love that too. So uh, we'll see you soon. Bye everyone. Happy knitting.